intermittent fasting. Every petite wants to know, should they be doing it? If so, how does it actually help you lose body fat? So this video is officially going to be about intermittent fasting, what it is, the different types, and then we are going to look at the research and come up with an optimal protocol for the petite female body type, specifically when it comes to intermittent fasting and your weight loss or your body fat loss goals. If you've been waiting for me to make this video, please give this a like, turn on the bell for notifications, subscribe for more content tailored to petite women. You guys requested this video, so I'm trying to pack it with all the research and also my personal opinion. And I'm also gonna tell you exactly what we tell our clients in our programs as far as our fasting protocol for petite specifically. So you'll walk away hopefully with clarity as well as additional research you can look into if you want to on this topic. When it comes to intermittent fasting, there is no one size fits all approach, but my hope is that this video will help you contextualize intermittent fasting through the petite female lens and give you that optimal protocol you're looking for. Okay, no more talking, let's get into it. So before we can get into the considerations for petite women, we need to just set the playing field. What is intermittent fasting? How does it affect the body, etc. So there are a few different types of intermittent fasting. The most widely studied ones are the ones that I'm going to focus on in this video mainly time restricted eating. This involves limiting your feeding or eating window to a certain number of hours per day. So for example, you could eat all of your meals between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and then fast for the remaining hours of the day, so during the night. That would be an example, not saying what you should do, but an example of a time restricted eating window. Typically you'll see the studies focus on limiting your feeding window to between eight and 12 hours and that can make the fasting window anywhere between 16 and 12 hours. So 16 is considered a longer time for fasting, 12 being less, but still a fasting window. So for the sake of this video, while there are other types of fasting, such as alternate day fasting, that's when you fast every other day, or you eat a very little amount of calories on certain days and then more on other days, there's also the 5-2 fasting protocol. This is when you eat normally five days out of the week and then you limit your calorie intake way low, like 500 calories for two non-consecutive uh, fasting days. So like I said, we're just focusing on time-restricted eating, that kind of fasting, because that's the most popular one. That's the one that everyone talks about, right? Okay, so why is everyone obsessed with fasting? What is it supposed to be doing in the body and what happens when our body fasts? Essentially, when you are not consuming calories, when you're not eating, your blood sugar levels drop and therefore your insulin levels drop as well because insulin is the hormone that comes and takes blood sugar out of the blood stream and puts it into your muscles and your body. And it's also known as the fat storing hormone. It kind of has that reputation. So the idea is when we have a period of time where we're not eating, we're not giving the body glucose, then the insulin is not getting spiked in our body we use up the stored glucose, which is glycogen first, that's our energy reserves, and then our body still needs energy, but since we're not feeding it, it has to go and break down the fat stores to have readily available energy. That means this whole concept is about insulin. If we keep insulin levels low, we can reduce fat storing opportunities overall. That's the idea, right? That's the benefit that people, when you're looking at wanting weight loss through IF, that's what they talk about. The problem is here that insulin management alone is not the most important factor when it comes to your weight loss or your fat loss. It's one of many, but it's something that I would call majoring in the minors because ultimately, if your calorie balance is not in check, it doesn't matter if your insulin levels are great because if you're eating in a really, really high surplus, but your insulin levels are stabilized, which would actually kind of be hard to do depending on, I guess, the foods you eat. But anyways, if you're eating in a surplus, but your insulin levels are quote unquote, you know, not spiking a lot, that doesn't mean you're gonna lose weight or fat. In other words, it's really important to understand and the research supports this, intermittent fasting is not a magic bullet when it comes to weight loss, okay? There's no magic situation here. Doing intermittent fasting does not automatically re result in weight loss either, not for anyone. For example, if you start intermittent fasting and you're really tired and your energy levels drop because you're not getting enough energy and food, you might start moving less. So if your movement goes down and you're eating fewer calories, you may not lose any weight. You may just maintain your weight because your movement has gone down. So it's a bigger picture that we need to look at when it comes to intermittent fasting, if you're specifically looking at it through a weight loss lens. I should mention there are a lot of other benefits to intermittent fasting, like looking at it through the lens of gut health or brain functioning. There's so much emerging research that's looking at it 
in different aspects, but for the sake of this video, because we mostly talk about fat loss and weight management, we'll just mostly talk about it from like a weight loss or a weight management standpoint. The point being here that the research shows that there is pretty high variability in intermittent fasting with people maintaining their weight, losing weight, and some gaining weight as well. Like the research has, you can find a study for supporting all of those kind of end results. And just because we are reducing insulin and increasing fat metabolism does not automatically mean that we're gonna be burning fat and losing weight. Cause people always ask April, does intermittent fasting actually help me lose body fat? So no, not automatically. And furthermore, research has shown that there's not really even a difference between weight loss that occurs due to IF versus typical traditional caloric restriction. In this one study here, they compared intermittent fasting with a traditional caloric restriction, you know, traditional diet. There was literally no meaningful difference in results that you could achieve with IF over a diet. They tended to lose weight at the same rate if they did, and it's basically the same thing. And this can happen because when some people do intermittent fasting, because they're restricting the time that they're eating to a smaller window, they may end up eating less overall and that's where the weight loss comes from. So when we talk about intermittent fasting for weight loss, a lot of times we're literally just talking about another way to create a caloric deficit, or it's really just another diet, essentially, if you're doing it for weight loss. Again, you might be doing it for other reasons that are health or performance related, but if you're looking at it from a weight loss perspective, unfortunately, we're just falling into another diet trap, which can be dangerous, but it's not all bad. We're gonna get into how you can get the most benefits of it without the bad sides of it in a minute. Like with any diet, we already know the biggest cause of weight gain is actually dieting. The biggest cause of binge eating is dieting and caloric restriction over a period of time. In this 2019 study, it was published in the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. It found that women who practice intermittent fasting had a decreased caloric intake right on, you know, some days, but they compensated by over consuming calories on their non-fasting days. I'm, this study looked particularly at like the 5-2 fasting windows, I believe, but this can go for anything. If you're restricting a lot during the week and then you're just not during the weekends or you, you get so hungry, you end up binge eating, right? You end up falling off the diet, like any diet, like any diet. It's not special because it's IF, it's just another diet. That overcompensation of calories can end up leading to weight gain and kind of backfiring. We're gonna get into what specifically is different about the petite female body and how I think intermittent fasting could impact petites in a different or more nuanced way. But this is one of the important things here is that for any woman, but also especially petite women, if you're doing fasting, you need to make sure you're getting enough calories during your feeding window so that it doesn't backfire and you end up overeating on other days. If you guys want to nerd out on insulin and go deeper into some of these like sciencey things about insulin, I highly recommend watching this video by Abby. She's a dietitian. She makes great videos. She explains it really well. And because I'm not going to go more into just general IF, I'm going to get into the petite stuff now. If you want to like dive into that stuff, go check out that video. It's a, it's a good video that explains it really well. Now we know what fasting is. We know what it's not. We know that it's not a magic bullet, but what is different with petite women? Firstly, before we're petite, we're women. So we have to understand that there are also going to be differences in fasting in a female male body versus a male body. And unfortunately there's not as much research, but there's still enough research that shows that fasting can affect women's bodies and hormones differently throughout the month. And this can make intermittent fasting for women slightly trickier to navigate than men. So there are differences between men and women. And this is a really major point also when it comes to looking at petite females, because we have these hormonal fluctuations throughout the month, intermittent fasting becomes more difficult to understand when to do it, when to not, how extreme, because we already have fluctuations. It's not every day that we're the same. And of course, when we're dealing with meal timing and when we're changing our meal timing, we're changing the release of our hormones. Insulin is a hormone. So it's impacting women in a more nuanced way and the research supports this as well. Generally, what you'll find if you look at the studies as a whole or you speak with most doctors, what they're gonna tell you is that women should take sort of a more relaxed approach to intermittent fasting, not to the extreme windows like the 16-8 where you're fasting for like a really long period of time because of the way that our hormones impact our appetite and also energy requirements differently throughout a month. So I think that's really important to know just as a woman off the bat, IF is already not like gonna be a quick fix for anything. And it could actually cause more problems in the long run if you're doing really extreme versions of IF. So for example, this study in Obesity Society, it showed that women with a healthy body weight began to experience an impaired glucose response with 
alternate day fasting. So that's a more extreme version. And as a result, one of the conclusions of the study was that time restricted eating where, you know, what we're talking about in this video is actually a safer option than the more extreme versions where you like go full days without eating. So that should just be noted that off the bat, like extreme versions should be off the table. And it's gonna be even more true for petite women when we get into the next part, which you'll see. Okay, so for petite women specifically now. First of all, as petite women, you guys already know, our caloric needs are slightly lower than those of taller or average heights and also men. We have less lean body mass. Our metabolisms are naturally slower. We have smaller organs. You guys know the deal. And as a result, we're eating less than a day to begin with. So to further restrict your feeding window can be super dangerous as a petite for the, all the same reasons that I say that dieting is not the way to go for petite women. If you're using IF as a form of more calorie restriction, it's also not gonna help you lose weight. Not only can you end up under eating and then that can lead to nutrient deficiencies and a slower metabolism overall, but it can also backfire and end up in binge eating and all the things that we don't like doing. And petite women are more prone to this you guys know because we're eating fewer calories in a day to begin with, so it's so much easier to end up starving or just literally only eating like one meal in a day because that's the only calories that we can afford to eat. And that's not the way to go for sustainable weight loss. And again, just referencing that, that 2019 study that showed that women that were decreasing their calories during their feeding window ended up binge eating later or overeating during other days, so it can backfire. So a uh, recommendation for petite women here, adjust your fasting window so that it's a little bit longer so that you're not forced to restrict as much. A shorter fasting window, I would say 12 hours is chef's kiss. We're gonna get into the science and the research behind the 12 hour fast. Between 12, 14 is the max that I'll allow my clients to do and more is not better, okay? But 12 can be more appropriate for the petite body type. And this is especially true if you have tried IF and had negative side effects, you might wanna just try a less aggressive feeding window. And in fact, we're gonna get into this, but a 2020 study published in the Journal of Nutrients found that a shorter fasting window, AKA 12 hours, I would say, 12 to 14 in the study, but 12 hours is optimal, was just as effective for weight loss and improving metabolic health markers in women as a longer fasting window, like 16 to 18 hours. So why would you do an 18 hour fast when you can get the same meaningful results with a shorter window, right? Also for petite women, hydration, because we just have a less, you know, we have less water in our bodies and taller individuals, we need to drink more water and make sure that we are incorporating electrolyte fluids, you know, vitamins, minerals, salts to stay hydrated. This can also help alleviate some of the effects of fasting, especially if you're trying to do a more aggressive fast, which again, I don't recommend for petite women. And a 2019 study published in the Journal of Nutritional Science found that staying hydrated during fasting periods can help alleviate some of the side effects potentially of fasting such as headaches and fatigue. So for petite women, this will also be super important because we are typically less hydrated. So staying hydrated is really gonna help with managing that fat, that shorter feeding window. Okay, another consideration for petite women, I kind of touched on this, but it's all about exercise and movement. This is one of the drawbacks to IF. This is why I don't recommend doing a super long fasting window because we tend to get really tired and fatigued because we're already eating less and then we do even more caloric restriction. This is what petite women tend to do, by the way, not what you should be doing. Then if you're in a steeper deficit on IF, you're gonna get fatigued, you're gonna get side effects, all the same side effects of a shitty diet, right? You're gonna feel exhausted and you're not gonna wanna work out anymore. You're not gonna have the nutrients or the energy to actually be able to work out. And now your energy expenditure is gonna drop and your metabolism is gonna drop. And you might not have like the motivation or the desire to, to build muscle anymore. And we need muscle mass to build faster metabolisms, to increase the number of calories we can eat in a day and build healthy, long lasting bodies. So if intermittent fasting for a long period of time is affecting your desire or your energy levels and you can't work out, then it's really not helping you in your long-term goals. Because as petites, we need to focus on building muscle. And the only way you're building muscle, girl, is being in the gym and lifting weights and working out, um, making sure you're getting stronger every day. So if you find yourself having to adjust your workout intensity or you can't lift weights because you are fasting and you're too tired, then it's not worth it and it's not helping you achieve your goals ultimately. So between adjusting your fasting window, the hydration and the exercise, those are the three biggest considerations when it comes to petite women that you need to think about if it's gonna be right for you. And again, the 12 hours is a really optimal place to be for a fasting window for petite women. In general, I don't recommend that any petite women do intermittent fasting for longer than 12 hours in general in 
because it can cause hormonal issues over time. There are some people that that's, that might be different for, but generally speaking, 12 hours is a really safe recommendation. I kind of think this is like the perfect sweet spot and I wanna also share some of that research in a moment with you. And before I do that, just so you know, this protocol, the 12 hour fasting window, it's 12 hours of you know where you can eat, 12 hours where you're fasted. This is the protocol that we teach inside Petite Power Premium. This is what we teach in the Petite Power Method in general for our petite women. It's not only based on the research, but it's also combined with the considerations that we petite women have to take into thought or account when it comes to our bodies. And by the way, if you're looking for the most optimal protocols, you know, for your nutrition as a petite, for your exercise, your movement, not just intermittent fasting, I have this awesome masterclass. It's all about the petite female body type. It gives you the exercise plan, your macro breakdown, your nutrition, the works of like the optimal body fat, weight loss, fat loss program for you as a petite. It's a totally free class and I'm teaching it live in these two upcoming dates, you can save your seat in that for free, but it's gonna expire. So make sure if you wanna come to that class, you save your seat at the link below and I will see you there. It gives you like all the optimal things you need to know about your body. You do not wanna miss it. Trust me, it is, it is gold. Be there or miss out and then I'll be sad for you. <laughs> That's up to you. Okay, so getting back to the 12 hour fasting window. Now there's this doctor I really like, Dr. Sachin Panda. His research in this one study in 2018, it was published in the Journal of Cell Metabolism. They basically found that the 12 hour fasting window, even that window could lead to improvements in metabolic health markers, such as blood sugar control, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels in overweight and obese individuals. And this pretty much suggests that the 12 hour eating window still has health benefits, even if it's not as restrictive as some of the shorter time restricted in eating windows. So I like his research. You can Google it, check him out if you wanna see more of his studies, I think it really shows that like the benefits of more is not more when it comes to your fasting window, you can get really good benefits with a 12 hour fasting window. That literally means that you can eat between you know 12 hours and then you would fast between 12 hours. And a lot of people ask in a Q and A on intermittent fasting, when's the best time to do the fast? According to your circadian rhythm and insulin levels and all metabolism, all this, the best time to fast would be when you're naturally fasting at night when you're sleeping. So if you're doing a 12 hour fast, you would wake up in the morning, break your fast, you know, whenever you want. If it, if you're starting at 8 a.m., then the last time you would eat would be 8 p.m. or it's not exact, but before 8 p.m. And then you'd sleep and get your 12 hours of fast while you're sleeping. That's gonna be how you make the most use of your calories throughout the day and keep your metabolism going. And again, I really like the 12 hour protocol for petite women because literally the results, specifically in a weight loss context, the results you can achieve with a 12 hour window is on par with the results of like a traditional dieting approach. You can still see meaningful results with 12 hours. So why not do the easier option? You know what I'm saying? Like it's all about being smarter, not doing things more or harder because for the sake of it, right? If you wanna go more into Dr. Panda Sachin's work, there's a really great podcast um, on the Andrew Huberman podcast. I'll leave the link below, but it's really a great deep dive. If you like to get into like the nitty gritty science like I do, that's, we don't go like that far on this channel, but check it out. It will go deep into like his work and his research on IF. Now I have one more hack for petite women. A lot of times women will get into this Petite women specifically, this habit of just grazing on food all day or eating a bunch of small meals throughout the day, you know, to keep your metabolism rev. We all know that's not real. You're gonna get way more results when you make bigger meals for yourself as a petite and less snacking overall. And we're talking about from an insulin standpoint, from a fat metabolism standpoint, if you can have a bigger meal and then give your body a break from eating for four or five hours, that means the meal needs to be substantial enough that you're not hungry, right? So you need to have a good meal, 30 grams of protein, get a good, some good fiber. Mm, you know, I wanna be like, mm. good meal. You can give your body a break from having to digest food for a few hours, and then that will naturally let your insulin go down and into more of a fat burning state. So huge hack for petites, we always fall for this. We're like grazing on food all day, stop doing that eat your two or three meals. I would say three meals a day is what I recommend in our Petit Fire Method, three meals a day. If you need a snack, that's okay. Make it a high protein snack. 
with some fiber, some healthy fats, PFF, petite friendly foods, protein, fat, fiber, and you're good to go. But try to avoid the grazing because that will result in blood sugar and insulin spikes. And that does not help you with your fat metabolism. Okay, who is IF not for? So just need to say this, there are some risks with IF. When you try it, ease into it, don't go into it crazy. Intermittent fasting can have side effects like fatigue and headaches and all these things, especially if you're doing like a really aggressive form of it, which I don't recommend. You really shouldn't be doing it if you're pregnant or breastfeeding because it affects your milk supply. It can, it can affect your hormone production. Um, the health of the baby. So that's definitely contraindicated. And as far as women with a history of disordered eating, I also don't recommend super intense or even any intermittent fasting windows, like just eat normally because of the research that's out there that shows it can trigger that. Because again, if you're doing intermittent fasting for weight loss, it's just basically the same as a crash diet. So we don't wanna be doing that at any point. Always remember to listen to your body. You guys are smart. Your body has wisdom and intelligence and there's no diet that's gonna be right for you if you're not also tuning into how you feel and like checking on yourself throughout it. So if it feels like shit, it's probably not right for you. Remember, you use common sense. Like intermittent fasting is not a magic bullet. That's why you don't see me talking about it all the time or trying to say everyone should do it. It's not gonna magically fix anything. The most important things are to look at your overall calorie balance, build muscle as a petite, eat balanced meals, PFF balanced meals, eat enough protein, focus on your sleep. Like these are the majors and we don't wanna waste too much time majoring in the minors. We wanna major in the majors so we can see some real impacts and see some real results over time. We have our May 15th session coming up, which goes into all the best protocols for your body as petite. It's a 12 week transformation program with registered dietitians, accountability coaches, me, personal trainers, we give you the workouts, the meal plans, the macros, the help, the support you need to actually implement the protocols and it's super sustainable. That's the most important thing. But if not, if you're not ready to join the program, no sweat. You can also come to my free class where I'm giving you like the quick hits. Like if I only had 40 minutes to change your life, it's in this class. I give you the exact protocols, fitness, nutrition, and mindset for the petite body type. Again, it's always about petites here. And you can sign up for free, totally free, right at this link or the description below. Save your seat. I do these live and seats are limited, so make sure you sign up so that you don't miss it. And if you guys got anything from this video, please give it a like and help support my channel. And subscribe if you're not already in the Petite Fam, would love to have you in the community here. If you have any questions about IF from this video, please drop them in the comments. I wanna know so much what you're thinking, what questions you have, what this brought up for you. And if there's enough interest, I can do a follow-up video or more of a Q&A where we just focus on IF. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next time. Bye.